Bangladesh, too often at the mercy of extreme weather. Densely populated and low-lying, it's one of the 10 countries most vulnerable to the impacts of the changing global climate. Recent extreme weather events in Bangladesh have caused increased flooding, riverbank erosion and salinization of fresh water in farmlands, taking a heavy toll on lives and livelihood. So how can millions of Bangladeshis protect their families and their incomes? A joint team of academics from Bangladesh and the UK are looking at the impact of climate change on migration. Their research commissioned by the Bangladesh government could help provide the answer and shape better public policy. They want to find out how migration works as a response to environmental stresses and what can be done to make migrants part of the solution. Whenever people are in stress, they do use migration as one of the adaptation tools. In the climate change scenario as well, people are using migration naturally, intuitively. They are just migrating. Rashid Alam Bhuya is one of the migration researchers. I am lecturer of the Department of Political Science at the University of Dhaka. Want to know how climate change related migration in Bangladesh is happening. We are travelling within, across Bangladesh to understand what makes it so vulnerable to extreme weather, to meet some of the people who are forced to move and others who are choosing to stay put and find out if migration could be part of the answer for people in the front line of climate change. We are heading to the south of Bangladesh, into the deltas of South Asia's great rivers, the Ganga, Brahmaputra and Meghna, a region that is highly prone to flooding. In May 2009, Cyclone Isla hit the coast of Shatkira, causing a tidal wave that flooded villages and fields with salt water for many months, destroying the livelihoods of nearly 4 million people. The Munda tribal community, living on the island of Kabura, faced the worst onslaught. Kabura is basically an island, you know, it's surrounded by rivers in all the, all the sites. This area was worsely affected by Cyclone Isla in 2009. People of these villages are living, in, with, living with constant fear and danger. They still memorize the events of 2009. Muhammad Didarul Islam, their leader, wants the policy makers to hear their plight. আমাদের এই দিব ইউনিয়ন যদি আবার এরকম ধরনের জলচ্ছাস হয় পানি বৃদ্ধি হয় আমাদের নিশ্চিত মৃত্যু ছাড়া আর বিকল্প কোনো পথ আমাদের ভিতরে নেই আর যদি বেঁচে গেলাম তো সেই ক্ষেত্রে জীবন জীবিকার জন্য এই নিয়ত বাইরে ছুটতে হবে আইন কামের জন্য বাচ্চা কাচ্চা পড়ার জন্য মা বোন পড়ার জন্য তাদের লেখাপড়া তাদের বাসস্থান এসবগুলো করার জন্য তো করতে হবে সাইক্লোন আইলা লেফট 190 ডেড বাট দ্য লস অফ লাইফস কুড হ্যাভ বিন ফার ফার হায়ার a cyclone in 1991 killed 190,000 people. For the past 20 years, Bangladesh has made huge progress in preserving lives with measures like cyclone shelters and 700 kilometers of sea defenses. But protecting people's income remains a challenge. Both the government and the NGOs have been working to provide people with solutions like saline tolerant rice. However, these have not been completely successful. Our research shows that these, all these local level employment generation avenues create only very little income and also like uh, resist, uh, drought resistant rice or you know uh, saline tolerant rice, all these production is much less when you compare to the production of others what they were used to before. Whether to stay or to go is a dilemma faced by families all along the Shatkira coast. Ayub Ali is the sole breadwinner of his family of six. 
he fishes in the Sundarbans, a source of survival for most families here. For Ayub's family, living in such hard conditions is a challenge. Post Isla period, the, the living condition is very difficult here, but they mention if the climate, climate change uh, stresses or climate change events uh, increase tremendously, they have no other options to either leave this village to and move back to other places for, for life and livelihood. For now, Ayub chose to stay, although it means living with constant fear and hardships. His brother Abdul chose to leave. I left. I left. I Abdul and his wife, Ruby Noor, left the coast in the region of Shatkira with their four daughters and headed inland to Khulna, 70 kilometers away. For the Noor family, moving away proved to be a good decision. But migration isn't always just as simple as moving out of danger. Migration is a manifestation of many reasons. Social, emotional, cultural, individual's attitude. All these contribute to migration decision. And when it comes to climate change, it becomes more complicated. At Dhaka University, Dr. Siddiqui and her team of social scientists have been researching how communities respond when hit by extreme floods and droughts and how they use different kinds of migration to cope. People on their own has chosen that a section of them would migrate and send certain remittances to these families and then try to sustain with the economic hardship. For those willing to make the move, Bangladesh's big cities offer the best chance to find work. Bangladesh is one of the largest manufacturers of ready-made garments products. You know, every year the country earns a lot of foreign currency through this sector. A huge workforce involved in this sector. Every year a lot of people come to Dhaka to get employment in this sector. Rashid has come to the outskirts of Dhaka to meet one of Shatkira's first woman migrants, Munira. I was able to get a job in the house. I was able to get a job in the house. I was able to get a job in the house. I was able to get a job in the house. I was able to get a job in the house. I was able to get a job in the house. I was through their research, Rashid and the team have found that migrants have developed a range of different ways to cope. We are now heading to another hot climatic hotspot of the country, the Chapan above country streams. Here we are going to meet a uh, farming community who, are, who have worked out an interesting way to migrate and uh, at the same time stay at home as well. The research team has been following one community which typifies this type of migration and Rashid is travelling up to the drought-stricken north of Bangladesh where the breadwinners virtually live on the go and send money back to their families. 
Rashid is meeting Salahuddin. He used to farm here but can't make a living from it anymore. His problem started a decade ago when the water table fell sharply and the rains failed. চারদিকে তাকালে স্যার বোঝা যায় যে আপনার সবা খাকার করছে এলে তো আপনার কোনো ধান হয় না ধান হলে এক আড্ডা ধান হয় স্যার তো এলে না হয় ধরে তো এবারকার ধরেন যে যেভাবে হোক সংসার তো চালাইতে হবে এখন এই ধান ধরেন যে দুই চার বছর থেকে পানিটা নিয়ে দিকে ভালো মতন হয় না তারপরে ধরেন যে কি এখন করছে যে যা পাচ্ছে করছে এখন তো আর না হলে এখন বাধ্যতামূলক ঢাকা যে সে খাটতে দের ইজ নো ওয়ার্ক ফর দ্য ম্যান হিয়ার The only way to feed their families is to find jobs in the city. ফ্রুটফুল ইন টার্মস অফ that these villagers or climatic stressful migrants can improve their skills Rashid is going to follow Salahuddin back to Dhaka to experience first hand his unending journey In Dhaka Salahuddin lives in the hub for migrants in Norda close to the popular diplomatic enclave of Gulshan Rashid wants to see how he copes with life in the city Salahuddin is one of the half a million rickshaw pullers who help keep the city moving. খুব ছোট থাকতে আমি আসছিলাম ঢাকাতে রিকশা চালাতে 10 11 বছর ধরে 10 11 বছর Salahuddin works about 12 to 14 hours a day for at least 20 days without a break. The economics are simple. For Salahuddin to make any money for his family, he must first pay 100 taka, a dollar and 25 cents for the rental of the rickshaw. And then another 100 taka or $1.25 for his stay and food whatever he makes above this is what he takes back home khub koshto to amra jibon japon kono din risha chalaye apnar koto thake ai sob kharch korar bad diye 3000 dhore 3000 taka thake once he feels he has collected enough money he is ready to return home to his village and his monthly journey is complete salauddin has been a secular migrant this type of circular bikers uh, they don't have enough work in the village so for them come to dhaka earn some money and go back to village is a good option so migration is not just a reaction to climate change but a coping mechanism that people undertake intuitively and creatively often without any external support dr siddiqui thinks it's one way that communities are coping which so far has not received the attention it deserves government so far is not looking at migration rather government is thinking that all their interventions are targeted towards so that people don't move from the area i think donor community also by and large think in that direction and that is where we come in that don't think of migration as a threat think of migration as a one of the strategy that can help people to cope under a change situation where climate stresses are making their lives difficult this lack of government support is a problem for people like salauddin in bangladesh policies promote international migration not internal movement internal migrants who come from rural areas to large cities like dhaka have no official status it means they tend to live in the very worst housing and can only access jobs in the informal sector with no official recognition they are especially vulnerable to exploitation by unscrupulous employers this is one reason why salauddin's friend ziaur rahman who has been migrating for 15 years juggles two jobs the first as a rickshaw puller 
and the other as a mason in Dhaka suburbs. I am a Rajmistri Kajkori, I am a Rajmistri Kajkori, J.R. Rahman, who is a construction worker, he also mentioned that the company he worked for didn't pay him regularly. So in Bangladesh, people don't show much respect to this group of migrants. When they first come to Dhaka, they have few facilities. They are actually victims of many exploitation. The employers always victimize them. They did not pay their wages regularly. Sometimes they, they are physically assaulted if they are demanding their pay. So government should immediately frame an internal migration policy because if government have an internal migration policy, this migrant group have some sort of rights. So what does the government think is the way ahead? I think it's a very timely study. Since we are the worst victims, Bangladesh also feel the urges of migration policy. Uh, to secure those people who are the worst victims of uh, climate change. We badly in need of uh, formulating such uh, policies related to migration or uh, climate change induced migration. So mega city development takes into account that these people should have their right, their work condition should be in a better position, minimum wage should be ensured and all these can be done through preparing an internal migration policy and then following it up with the employers. So everywhere certain order, certain type of rights protection mechanism we would like to see out of this research. Bangladesh has made great progress in protecting people's lives from floods, droughts and cyclones. But the economic impacts of disasters and livelihoods continue to be huge. Helping climate migrants to help themselves with social policies to protect their rights could be an important part of the answer. Huge amount of people usually migrate internally from one district to another district and they, they used to they have no other options in their villages. They used to come to urban areas for, for better income. I want to see these people have some rights. These people have some livelihood options. They choose migration as an adaptation tool. They choose is as livelihood options for them. So if these people have some certain rights for them, I would be happy. If the global temperature rises more than 2 degrees Celsius, almost 35% of the coastal area of Bangladesh will go underwater. Since we are the passengers of the same boat, there is only one earth, there is no other planet in the world, only the earth. So our appeal to developed countries and industrially developed countries and basic countries to reduce their emission, to make the life of our next generation and future generation safe.